Hey guys, welcome once more to our YouTube channel. It's always a pleasure to have you here. So today, very quickly, we're going to be looking at part one of Northwest Mock 2016, which is basically the question one. So we're pretty much going to be looking at this mock. It's an interesting mock. It has some really interesting questions. So yeah, let's dive in. All right, guys, so here's our question. Just quickly pause the video, go through the question, see what it's asking of you, attempt solving it, and then check what we have done. When is the physical equation set to be homogeneous? All right, so the examiner is really pretty much asking you for what the homogeneous equation is, right? And so you realize that, well, when every other term in the equation has identical base units, then the equation is set to be homogeneous, okay? The Roman who says, explain why an equation which is not homogeneous cannot be physically correct. Okay, so when our students read this, they were like, ooh, okay, an equation that's not homogeneous cannot be physically correct because homogeneity is a necessary condition for the correctness of a physical equation. And so when a physical equation is not homogeneous, it is not possible for it to be physically correct. Okay, that's an out, but I really wouldn't consider that uh if, if i was marking your script why because you are you want we need you to tell us why homogeneity is a necessary condition for the correctness of the physical equation that's where it gets deeper so uh i'll put it this way now a physical equation may have dissimilar terms added okay so a student can say all right pressure equals to force and that's an equation so why is that wrong well that is wrong because the algebra of the unit is flawed all right why the newton can never be equal to the pascals and so th that's a fundamental flaw and that's why a, an equation that is not homogeneous can never be physically correct okay uh so so and that is the reason why we say homogeneity is a necessary condition for the correctness of the physical equation because the first thing is that hey you want to make sure that the units are consistent in that equation. The units are consistent. Then let's start testing now for, oh, at the presence of dimensionless constants, uh, the inability of homogeneity to test the units of trigonometric exponential and logarithmic functions, uh, left out portion of the equation. But the first very fundamental thing is we want to make sure that the units are consistent. And that's what, that's what you say, all right? And this part, now leads to the fact that homogeneity should now be a necessary condition for the correctness of the equation. I hope you get this, right? If you don't get it, drop your questions down in the comment section below. Maybe I'll clarify them with, with some text messages. Uh, and then we go on, they say the potential difference in RL circuit is given by this. Show that this equation like that is homogeneous. Okay, they'll define for us what V, V naught and the other terms are. So if you read the previous question, if you read the question in the previous part, you would notice now um what we really have to do here is notice that v and v not have the same base unit so we are adding this term here this is one and it's added to all of this now the only way this equation is homogeneous remember that we said every added term should have the same base unit so one is a constant here so we want to make sure that the unit of all of this thing like that has to be one how do i make sure that the unit of all of this thing has to be one okay i have to make sure that i'm raising a constant to a constant Okay, and so the exponent here has to be a constant. So the unit of RT over L has to be one, all right? And so that's where the trick really is. So uh, since V and V not have identical units, to show that the equation is homogeneous, the unit of RT over L must be one, okay? And so you realize that the base unit of R, because I want to show that this, this, this units here like that basically simplifies to one. So I need to first of all get the base unit of R, right? the base unit of l and then that must by that way the second is better by the unit of l so what's the base unit of r well remember that power is i squared r if you remember the equation so if power is i squared r you realize here that well our r will just be base unit of power divided by unit base unit of i squared so you put that in power is force times velocity you simplify that you have that the base unit of r now you go over and then you want to get the base unit of inductance here there are two ways i just decided to use for this um law of electromagnetic induction to define what inductance is because like that is crucial for physics so the base unit of the emf divided by base unit of 
the time rate of change of current because induced emf across a solenoid is equal to what the inductance of that core multiplied by the time rate of change of current through that core okay and yeah so that's basically what i'm doing to get the inductance so if you put that in emf well emf is as voltage right so power is iv then um, power therefore is uh, vo voltage therefore is power over i right and so that's why you see kilogram meter square per second cube, which is T power up here. And then we have per ampere there. That's the unit of the EMF. And then the base unit of the IDT, the IDT is basically the time of change of current, uh, ampere over second. So ampere, sec ampere per second. So our base unit of L is all of that. Now, if we want to look for the base unit of ROC over L, then you realize that I'll simply take a base unit of this guy, multiply that with the second divided by the base unit of this guy, which gives me one. And so you notice that our equation is therefore homogeneous. And that is the proof, guys. That is it. I hope you enjoyed it. If there are any worries, please leave us comments in the comment section below. We are very keen. We reply to every single comment that is dropped in our comment section. Thank you so much for checking this out. We are bringing up the question two, question three, and the other portions of this mock subsequently. Stay tuned.